Why, AMD, why? I just don't understand why you would make this good feature that will boost frame rates for just a small hit to image quality, but you just wouldn't bring it to the older graphics cards like the RX 580 or the RX 470, the ones that actually need it. It just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and at long last, AMD's Radeon Super Resolution feature or RSR has finally arrived. So this was first announced back at CES but it's been pretty much radio silence on this feature since then. Until this week though, as RSR has arrived in the Adrenaline 22.3.1 driver. If you missed that announcement at CES and are wondering just what we're talking about, RSR is a spatial upscaling feature from AMD that uses the same upscaling algorithm as FSR. The key difference though, and arguably the most important difference, is that it is a driver level feature, so it can work in any game you want without requiring extra work from the developers. In other words, it's an AMD equivalent to NVIDIA's image scaling feature that we looked at last year, and of course we will be comparing those two today, while also adding in DLSS and FSR into the mix. First things first though, how do you enable it? Well, for starters, and as I alluded to in my introduction, you can only use RSR if you have an AMD RX 5000 series or newer GPU, so you need either an RGNA1 or RGNA2 graphics card. Straight away then, that is going to rule out anyone on a Vega architecture card, anyone with a Polaris GPU, those who arguably might need RSR the most, they're not going to be able to use it. However, if you are one of the lucky few, you just need to open up your adrenaline driver and navigate to the global graphics tab. There you will find a new toggle for Radiant Super Resolution which you can toggle on or off. Then you just need to open your game of choice, lower the in-game resolution and let RSR upscale to your monitor's native resolution. You can also verify that RSR is active by opening the adrenaline overlay while you're in-game. It's also worth pointing out that last time I made a video like this, I do think it's fair to say I got a bit of stick for upscaling to a 4K resolution. Now, while 4K may look best for a 4K video, the likes of which we make here at KitGuru, of course, most people are still gaming on a 1080p screen. So today then, I'm doing all of my game capture using a 1080p resolution, so we're going to see how well all of the different upscalers do for 1080p gaming. If you're wondering as well, all of our game capture was taken using an Elgato 4K60 Pro, and for our PC, we're using our regular GPU test system supplied to us by MSI. So this is built around an i9-12900K CPU, paired with the MSI Meg Z690 Unifier motherboard and 32GB of DDR5 memory. Footage showing FSR and RSR was recorded using an RX 6600 XT, while footage showing off NIS and DLSS was recorded using an RTX 3060. Let's dive right in to the image quality comparisons though, and if I haven't mentioned already, the tool we're going to be using for all of these comparisons is NVIDIA iCAT, just because I find it's a really handy way to compare up to four different images or videos side by side. So we are starting in Horizon Zero Dawn, and the first comparison I want to make is going to be FSR versus RSR. So we've got FSR Ultra Quality Mode on the left hand side, and we've got RSR Ultra Quality Mode on the right hand side. So both images are using a 77% render scale of 1080p. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit, and we'll click play, and the reason I'm going to start with this comparison first is, in theory, there should be no major differences between RSR and FSR. So, based on the initial showing, at least when we're playing through with motion, I'd say it's very hard to tell the difference. We can go ahead and pause, 
And what I'm actually going to do is change to the split screen mode. And we should be able to zoom in a bit on young Aloy. We can probably line up that comparison a bit better. There we go. Um, so just a reminder, on the right we've got RSR. On the left we've got FSR. So mm, I wouldn't say there was much difference there at all. Very, very similar. Certainly, this is zoomed in, by the way, to almost 200%. If we pull out, I'm really not sure you'd be able to tell the difference. We'll go ahead, zoom in a bit more, and press play. As a reminder, these are all using the same render scales, and they're both using the same FSR algorithm to upscale to 1080p. Overall, then, there really shouldn't be much, if any, of a difference when comparing FSR to RSR, apart from one key thing, and that's why we've introduced another image. So now on the left-hand side, we have FSR. In the middle, we actually have a native 1080p picture, and on the right-hand side now, we have RSR. So the thing with RSR and the fact being it is a global or driver-level solution means that literally everything on screen is being upscaled, and that includes HUD elements or the general UI. Whereas with FSR, the actual upscaling takes place before the HUD or UI elements are added. So the HUD and UI should all be delivered at native resolution, giving a sharper overall look. So what we can see here is, if we just zoom in on these little HUD elements in Horizon Zero Dawn, I would say that is quite noticeable. So these two images here, they are both native 1080p for the HUD whereas this one is being upscaled, and you can see especially in the text where it says 178 out of 210, that definitely looks a bit softer to me. And then here with how many steps it takes to get to Rost, you can see again, just looks a bit softer on the right hand side. How much of a difference that is actually gonna make in practice, especially when using a 77% render scale for RSR, I don't think is a massive deal, but it is something that is noticeable if you go looking for it. Moving on though, and now we're gonna look at RSR on the right hand side, still with a 77% render scale, compared to native 1080p. So this will really show you how much image quality you're losing if you do use RSR instead of a native 1080p. So I'm gonna go ahead and click play. We'll zoom in a bit more. And I think what I would say is especially in Horizon Zero Dawn. This game has quite a lot of shimmer as part of its anti-aliasing solution to begin with. And actually, I'll just go back so we can play that again, just to give it another closer look. So particularly on these leaves here, we can notice some shimmering with the RSR. It is obviously still present at native resolution, but I'd say RSR actually exacerbates this issue. And that's because FSR or RSR, the overall upscaling algorithm, doesn't replace the native anti-aliasing. So any artifacts that are visible using the native resolution are only going to be exacerbated if you upscale with RSR. If we contrast that with the approach taken by DLSS, which is actually very different as it's a reconstruction technique as opposed to an upscaling technique, we can really see the difference. So we've got DLSS on the left-hand side here, and we have RSR still at 77% render scale, over on the right hand side. I've set it to a half speed so you can really see the difference, but I would say it's very, very clear. It's so much more shimmery using RSR compared to DLSS, which eliminates almost all of that shimmer, I would say. If I put it back to the beginning, just so you can see that again, we'll focus on some of the grass here. RSR, very shimmery and a lot, lot cleaner. You can definitely pick out way more detail using DLSS. The only thing I would say though, is that that does come at the cost of some sharpness. So as a reminder, on the right hand side, we've got RSR, but as we pull over to the left, we can see DLSS. DLSS, I would say, is the better overall picture. RSR is much sharper overall, however. Still, for me, especially considering the fact that DLSS is actually rendering at a lower base resolution compared to RSR, I would definitely rather go for the DLSS solution, although obviously that is going to require an RTX card. I do also just want to show the reason why we're only really gonna be focusing on the ultra quality RSR mode or 
the one with a 77% render scale. And that's because when you're upscaling to 1080p, anything below that, you start to run out of pixels very quickly. So here in the middle, we've got RSR using a 59% render scale, which is the equivalent of FSR's balanced option. And on the right hand side, we have a 50% render scale, which is the equivalent to the performance option. And we're comparing that to native 1080p on the left. So straight away, you can already see you lose detail very, very quickly when you get into these sub 1080p resolutions. Obviously with RSR being a spatial algorithm, it just can't really make up the difference that well. And the image starts to look both very soft and also the shimmer again is very much exacerbated. You can see that if we go over here, native, still shimmery, but compared to the performance mode, it looks frankly awful. So that's just a quick explanation as to why I think we're only really gonna be looking at the 77% render scale. For me personally, that's the only mode I would really be happy using. Just going back to hammer home the point about DLSS as well and the fact that it is a reconstruction technique which can definitely help it get some superior results. Here we're comparing DLSS using its balance mode on the left hand side, so that's a 58% render scale, compared to RSR using the equivalent of the balance mode which is a 59% render scale. So both very similar internal resolutions. But if I go ahead and click play, Again, it really is a night and day difference, just how much cleaner the overall image is when using DLSS, thanks to its temporal reconstruction, as opposed to the spatial upscaling you get with RSR. Moving on though, it's time to look at Guardians of the Galaxy. I'll just zoom in a bit more. And here we are comparing native 1080p on the left hand side to RSR with a 77% render scale over on the right. I'll go ahead and click play. I already did my best to line these ones up, so hopefully that will work okay. And the reason I'm just gonna let this play through is because I think when looking at different upscaling solutions, it can be very easy to want to zoom in to 200, 300% and get really picky with the details. But I think when you're actually just playing the game, would you really notice much of a difference? So just as Star-Lord turns around the corner, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. So if we zoom in here, you can see that this fencing in the background, it does look more detailed. You're definitely losing some clarity and, you know, some of the individual wiring just isn't coming through like it would at native resolution. But if we look down here, that's actually me zooming into 315%. If I pull back out, we'll go for we'll go to one to one. Can you really spot the difference if you were actually running through this area as well? If I go ahead and click play again, I'm really not sure you would. So for me, I do find these different settings and these different upscaling solutions. You can notice differences if you get really picky, but I still think they're quite usable. Let's talk about NVIDIA image scaling though, which I've put on the left-hand side here compared to RSR on the right-hand side. And both are using a 77% render scale, so they are directly comparable. I'll go ahead and click play just so we can kind of get a little a little feel for the differences. But actually what I'll do is I'll just pause it. Maybe I'll just move back slightly before Starlord moved his head. Just about there. And we'll go to the split screen mode so we can zoom in a bit. I want to show the differences in fine detail. Basically, both are spatial upscaling solutions. And I really don't think you're going to notice much difference between the two. If anything, NIS I think is a bit sharper. As a reminder, NIS is on the left as I'm pulling over now. And as I pull over to the right, that is RSR. I think the fact that with NIS as well, you can adjust the sharpening you know, on a per game basis, whereas with RSR, it's a fixed algorithm. I think that definitely is a plus point for NIS. But the actual difference in overall image quality, I would say they're very, very similar. They're very similar algorithms overall. And I think you'd really struggle to tell the difference when actually playing the game. We'll also compare FSR using its ultra quality mode, which is on the left, and RSR using an equivalent render scale on the right hand side. So as these are using the same render resolution and the same overall upscaling algorithm, the overall image should look very, very similar. But I'll actually go ahead and pause it just there. 
And I've noticed something in Guardians of the Galaxy, which I think might be an issue with how FSR has been implemented. Basically, for some reason, I'm not quite sure why. I'll even actually go over to the split screen mode so you can get a better idea. So as a reminder, FSR is on the left, RSR is on the right. So I'm pulling over FSR now. For some reason, for, you know, I really don't know why, but it seems like RSR is applying significantly more sharpening. The overall image and the edges particularly just look that bit more defined. So I'm really wondering if, for some reason, the FSR implementation just hasn't been done quite right, as they really should be the same sort of image quality. As mentioned, you cannot actually adjust the level of sharpness for either RSR or FSR, which is definitely a positive actually for NIS because you can set the overall sharpness on a per game basis just by using GeForce Experience. But if I go ahead and pause just there, we'll go back over to the split screen mode. We'll look at this fencing here. We can really see, so right now we're looking at RSR and that's FSR. You can definitely see the edges, the overall kind of edge contrast is significantly higher using RSR and it gives you, I guess, the perception of a more detailed image, even though they're both using the same render resolution. That could be a reason if you're using a game that has a particularly poor FSR solution, for instance, it could be an argument why you may want to try RSR instead. As I said, in theory, they should look the same, but if the FSR hasn't been implemented quite right, it may be something you want to look at. For one final comparison then in Guardians of the Galaxy, how about DLSS quality mode and RSR set to quality mode or a 67% render scale. So they're both using the same internal resolution. This kind of leads back to what we were just talking about in terms of the overall sharpness. I'll just go over to the split screen mode and what we can see is I'm pulling over what we can see now is RSR and then back to DLSS. Like I said, with RSI, it does sharpen the image up significantly. So as I pull it over now, you can see it does look much sharper to the eye. And again, that can increase the perception of more detail. However, it does also introduce a fair few sharpening artifacts, whereas DLSS, which we can see now, definitely cleans up the image a lot and also reduces the amount of jaggies. However, I can see it both ways up to you it might be you know your personal preference if you'd rather have it slightly softer but cleaner or a bit sharper um, but also slightly a messier overall presentation the thing I would say again though is if we just let the footage run through are you really gonna tell that much of a difference especially when they're both sub 1080p resolutions I would say both are looking pretty good overall for a final game comparison then we've come to F1 2021. I'm going to actually go ahead and set a half speed and click play. So here we're looking at native 1080p on the left hand side and then we've got RSR using a 77% render scale over on the right hand side. What I'm actually going to do first is pause it here and I'm going to show you again kind of what the point I made when looking at Guardians of the Galaxy. If we go ahead and look at some really fine details, we zoom in to about 200%. So I'm pulling over RSR now, whereas that's native 1080p. We can see the text around here does look sharper using native res, not quite as pixelated. And same for the reflection in the wing mirror as well. Just that bit more detailed and less pixelated. However, if I go ahead, put them side by side, We'll go for a one-to-one -one ratio, full speed, and hit play. Are you telling me you're going to notice the difference when you're gaming at this speed? I really don't think so. The same very much can be said when looking at FSR, which we've got on the left here, and RSR on the right. We really wouldn't expect there to be much difference, and I really can't see any. I've been kind of looking at this different section of video for the last couple of minutes, and I'm really not seeing much, which is definitely a positive and shows RSR is working as intended. One thing we will notice though, and for this I'll actually go over to the split screen mode. One thing we will notice is that as we already mentioned, FSR is going to play the HUD or FSR is going to show the HUD or the UI at native resolution. 
Whereas if I pull RSR over, you can see it's being upscaled. It's just not quite as crisp. So that's FSR. Definitely looks a little bit sharper overall. But that being said, if a game doesn't support FSR, I don't really think that's going to be the end of the world. Particularly considering the performance uplifts, which we'll get to in a minute. In actual fact, if we bring in DLSS, even that I don't think is looking that much better than RSR. Remember we're using DLSS quality mode here on the left, so that is using a lower internal resolution than RSR on the right. If we look first at the body of the car again, I would say text is looking sharper, especially around the, the team viewer logo just there. But if we go ahead, we'll zoom to one to one and click play. In motion, I don't think the differences are really that noticeable. We'll keep it going round as they go past this sign. And we can just, just pause there. Again, zooming in, there's a little bit of tearing actually. So we'll just go to the next frame. You can see tearing on this image. I'm looking at the crane here. It is sharper overall and the tent in the background. It's not the best example because we do have that tear. So you are getting, you know, better, you know, far away detail, I guess, using DLSS, but that's not really what you're focusing on when playing this game. So for me, RSR definitely is usable if you have a GPU that can make use of it. That's where we'll leave the game capture though, and let's talk about performance. And honestly, again, I can't say there are any surprises here. We've normalized the chart so that native resolution performance is shown as 100%, and that shows us that RSR does provide a small improvement to frame rate compared to FSR, but only by a couple of percent. Of course, we can't run RSR on our NVIDIA GPU, but the relative gain from using RSR is slightly better than what we get using NIS on the RTX 3060. The situation is slightly different in Guardians of the Galaxy, where I do wonder if the FSR issue we already spoke about is affecting performance. But we are still looking at a 20% boost to frame rates using RSR at a 77% render scale, so that's not to be sniffed at. We do also see more of the same in F1 2021, where we get a 23% boost using RSR, and that is again a better relative increase when compared to NIS, which boosted frame rates by 19% for the RTX 3060. That's going to do it for our look at RSR then, and overall it does what we'd expect. It is basically the same thing as FSR, but applied on a global level. So image quality between the two is very similar. The one real difference is the fact that with RSR, your HUD elements and subtitles, for instance, are now upscaled. So they're not quite as sharp as with FSR, but I wouldn't say it was a major issue. Being a driver level feature as well, RSR is basically AMD's answer to NVIDIA image scaling, and as we've shown throughout this video, the two are again very similar in terms of image quality. No, RSR may not be as good as DLSS in most situations, but I'd still say it is a solid alternative if you have no other options. The thing I just can't wrap my head around is why AMD would restrict RSR to those with the RX 5000 series or newer. I just don't think those are the people who need to use a feature like this. It's those who have older GPUs like the RX 470 or RX 480 who would really get a benefit from RSR, but those cars just aren't supported. I really do hope AMD is going to roll out RSR to older GPU architectures. The underlying technology is solid as we've shown in this video, it's just right now, it's not in the hands of those who need it most. Anyway, guys, that is where I'm going to leave this video. So if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up. And as always, leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell. And why not come chat with us on our Discord server, 
which is linked down in the description. While you're there, you can also find a link to our merch store, and you can even consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. That is it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic4KGuru, and I'll see you in the next video.